So have you ever had an idea for a product that was so compelling that you felt like it just had to exist? Um, maybe you watched an episode of Shark Tank and thought, my idea is better than that. Or you looked at the shelves at the retail store and said, hey, wait a second, that, that junk, I, you know, surely it's not that hard. Um, and you find yourself then saying, you know, maybe, maybe I could go ahead and do it. What if you actually indulge that? So for me, the aha moment came about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and, and the idea was for this product called Poppy. And I had no idea what I was getting myself into. So uh, despite what Bruce said, I'm really a software guy, and this whole manufacturing thing is totally new to me. And I didn't realize that the idea is just such a small part of a physical product, and uh, got a real appreciation for that. So I I've been fascinated with 3D photography for my whole life, basically. I had a Viewmaster when I was a kid, and when you look through this thing, you know, you hold it up to your face, and it's like blocks out the world, and then it becomes 3D, and it just sucks you in. And there's this magical property of sort of transporting you to this other world that I found really exciting. Um, but the technology behind that, the principle behind that is actually a lot older than that. It's been around since 1838. It was invented by this guy named Charles Wheatstone. And uh, the idea is that you take two pictures, one from the perspective of the left eye, one from the perspective of the right eye, and then when you view it through this stereoscope, your brain fuses the two images into one and you get this 3D beautiful image. So Poppy is basically the same thing, except it uses the iPhone. So there are mirrors that sit in front of the lens that split the image that your camera sees. And then there are lenses that let you view it uh, so, that the, uh, so that you can see a 3D image on your iPhone screen. And so it's, it's a lot like a Viewmaster, except that you can actually capture your own pictures in 3D and even shoot video. So uh, the, the problem here was that I've, I actually don't know the first thing about optics. So before I could get started on this, it was like, I better make a prototype. So I went and bought some mirrors online and I laser cut a little cardboard housing, put it together, and when I took the first picture and it actually showed up in 3D, I was like, I was shocked. I was, <laughs> I couldn't believe it actually worked. Um, but then I, then I realized that cardboard wasn't gonna cut it for a mass-produced product. So I, a friend turned me on to some software that's a 3D modeling software called Rhino and um, learned how to use that so that I could make this 3D model so that I could start to get something made. Um, and once I had the model, I desperately wanted to actually hold the thing in my hand. So you guys probably heard of uh, 3D printing. So uh, it turns out now you can take a 3D model that you make, you can attach it to an email, send it off, and a week later, a package shows up at your house, you open it up, and inside is that thing that you envisioned on the screen. And uh, that, was, that was pretty awesome. I remember thinking at the time, I was like, oh, I'm probably about halfway done with this project, right? Which was idiocy. So. Uh, I, uh, a friend of mine and I decided to go all in on Poppy, and we uh, hopped on a plane, went to China, and we visited a bunch of factories, and we found a manufacturer. Um, and a, a guy uh, that we trusted had introduced us to this factory, and he'd, uh, he, this place was, they'd done similar projects. So we felt like, okay, maybe they can handle this. Um, but there was only one problem. It costs a lot of money to manufacture something. So even though China is famously inexpensive for manufacturing, if you take the costs of, of uh, injection molding and the tools you need and all the parts and labor and the specialty mirrors we needed, it added up to over $100,000 and we just didn't have that kind of money sitting around. So we turned to crowdfunding. Um, and uh, crowdfunding isn't like traditional fundraising. You don't sell shares in a company. You basically pre-sell your product on a site like Kickstarter and backers are getting the bragging rights of getting the first version of this new product and they're getting to support something. So they're excited about the product and they'll support it. And if we get enough money, we can do it. Well. We, uh, we, we went ahead and, and, and got lots of other benefits from it too. We got a community of people who supported Poppy and got excited about it. We got to talk to the press because it turns out demonstrating 3D on a flat screen is really hard. So we went around to the press and showed them Poppy and let them play with it in person. And at the end of the day, we, we raised almost 200 grand, which it turned out was totally lucky because we needed every penny. Uh, so, so another thing, just quickly think about China. I think a lot of people have heard that you'll get your ideas stolen or all this bad stuff. We didn't have any bad experiences that way. The only problem we had was that the communication barrier is so much worse than you think it might be. Um, it's the language barrier, the cultural barrier, the time difference, all that stuff adds up to making it really, really hard. So when things go wrong, you have to hop on a plane and go back to China because it's the only way to get anything done. So uh, just as the product was rolling off the assembly line, I went back, sat down with them, and all these problems that had taken months to work out over the phone and email was just like minutes sitting right next door to the factory, and it was, just, it was, it was really easy and really fun being there. But we sort of neglected another piece of the project, which is that you actually have to ship these things. And it turns out that's really hard. We had about 5,000 boxes we needed to send to 52 countries around the world. And uh, when you look at it, you've got to 
put all the product, first you gotta test the product, then you gotta put it in a package, you gotta load it up on pallets, you gotta ship it from the factory to the port, go through Chinese customs, put it on a plane or a ship, then unload it on the other end and get it through US customs and then ship it to the distribution warehouse where they unpack it, put labels on everything. We, these, this is a funny thing. We had these labels that had a light sensitive ink on it that got in the sunlight and it all faded away. Nothing. So anyway, shipping is awful. Oh, and then we realized when we got home from that trip to China that, oh right, there's a companion app that goes with this. And this was the easy part for us, but it was late November and the product was shipping in a couple of weeks. So that was sort of a bit of a mad scramble at the end of the process for what we had hoped would be trivial. Um, but good news was we got all that done and we'd promised during the Kickstarter campaign that things would ship by Christmas. We were like, well, we'll get it, we'll get it shipped out by the end of the year, I think we said. So we ended up having to put those pallets on a plane uh, and hire a special delivery truck to get things to, to arrive on time. And it was this incredible relief when the first product showed up at people's doors on Christmas Eve. It felt really good. And then we realized that this was just the beginning. Because of course, great, we've manufactured it, we've shipped it, but now we have to sell it. And so we kind of threw away our manufacturing hat and ignored everything else and went into, you know, sell the retailers on it and try to get it into retail stores and market to consumers. And that whole process has been the last few months. Well, anyway, software is easy. <laughs> I recommend it. No, software is great because the idea to product is, is very fast. It's a very short journey. But in hardware, the idea is just this first infinitesimal step in the process. So if you ever do make a hardware project and you decide you're going to make this thing real, I highly recommend that you expect it to take time and, uh, and know that when you're done, it'll feel so good to see something real in the world that you'd thought up months or years before. Thanks. <laughs>